Hello everybody and welcome to my channel Lepic Trilingual Gaming. Yes, this is normally a gaming channel, but today, people, we're going to do something completely different. We are going to paint. Well, I'm going to paint and I'm going to show you how you can paint if you wish to paint. If it is your desire to paint, I'm going to show you how you can do so. We are going to paint in the style of Bob Ross, right? Okay. And please, I am no expert. This is my, th what you are seeing right now is my second attempt at this. All right. I have painted uh, in real life, uh, as in not d digital, but this is, uh, yes, like I said, my second attempt at this technique in a program called GIMP. Right. For those of you who don't know, GIMP is a photo editing software, very much like Photoshop, but it is free. It is absolutely free. I'm not kidding. You can go right now to uh, www.gimp.org. And this is the main page and you just click on this and then you click on that. No, not this on oh, this one. Right. And it'll download the setup thing and you can install it from there. All right, so once you have installed the program and everything went well, you may start it. And once you start it, this is what you're going to see the very first time with a few differences, of course, but uh, this is what you're going to see mainly. All right. And what we can do now is simply go to file, click on new, create a new document with the settings that you want. I'm going to do 1080p just because all right, and here we have already our, our new canvas, if you will. Yes, this is going to be our canvas. So I don't know why the background is black. I'm going to take the bucket tool and click it. And since we have white, it'll turn it into the white color. Also, something I'd like to um, mention, people, is I have downloaded a set of brushes that I use specifically for... Um, painting like Bob Ross. And in fact, I have also called it Bob Ross brush set. <laughs> All right. Uh, these are the ones that come with the program. But this one I, I downloaded from a website and the link is in the description. So there it is. And there you can get the necessary tools you need. You don't need it. You can get around you know, you can you can you can paint like Bob Ross without getting these. But I, I, you know, I recommend them because they really help out a lot. All right. So let's talk about really quick here about this. OK, this is the paintbrush tool. Yes. As the icon shows. And here we can take any color and here we can take any brush. Let's take this one right here. And uh, there we go. This is it. All right. This is basically a brush stroke, simulating brush strokes. Lots of options that you have here, size, aspect ratio, angle of the brush. So enough talking, people. Let's go ahead and let's begin with, you know, something that resembles a Bob Ross painting. So let's start with the sky, shall we? Okay, so this is our first color. Then we're going to take a second blue that is a lot lighter. We're going to do like this. So we're going to take one more blue and it's going to be a little bit lighter, quite a little bit lighter. And there is a reason why I go down all the way down with the sky color, even though that, you know, the sky doesn't do that. But there is a reason that, well, it depends if I want to do reflections later on, I want the sky color as well. So, so yeah, so now let's go ahead and take the smudge tool. And I'm going to go back to my Bob Ross brushes. Boop, boop. And I'm going to go down and take the one I like. There we go. This is one I like to do the smoldering. And then we just basically start blending in the sky. And you see, it's a beautiful, smooth transition. And you can do all sorts of little things here. You know, this is highly inspired by Bob Ross, as you can tell. So. I uh, I find myself talking like him many times, you know, creating little things in your world. Maybe the hardness I could do a little less with and some less force. You know, I don't want to see those jagged lines. There we go. There, there. 
there as he goes always right there we go we have a nice standard quick sky that we can use all right we're gonna take um let's do happy little clouds i think it's time for some happy little clouds let's put in um i'm gonna do my first cloud um color it's gonna be a this blue all right and now watch what happens since we have oh wait i need to take the brush now watch what happens if i begin here it's a very light blue but once i start going down the line you see it turns dark blue it's just this magic <laughs> it's just the the background that i've made has now created this sort of gradient it's it's actually it's it's it's, it's simply beautiful and now we're going to take a darker blue a little bit darker to make the shadows underneath of this and these are really thin lines um this is again this is just a really quick tutorial no, normally i would take a long time to do this sit down and then just take the smudge tool and make things happen so let's see i'm not really happy with the clouds but never mind this is just a quick tutorial we're just buzzing through this and we can add a really light layer on top of this there and maybe this little cloud as a little friend everybody needs a little friend but yes as you can see you know i'm not a painter i really i don't, I don't paint i i'm not really that good at stuff in terms of painting and and, and and color choosing but this just i don't know this just happens magically using bob ross's technique and if you take a look you see these clouds <laughs> i mean I call them clouds, they, they maybe they're not as perfect, but there's just things happening here, you know? Okay, we are going to take another brush. We're going to take one of those brushes that are on, you know, this one, inclined. All right, it's a bit big, so we're going to uh, decrease the size. And then we're going to put it like so, you know, have this angle of five. I don't know if it's five degrees, I don't know, but it's five like this, like a knife, okay? Because when Bob Ross paints mountains, he paints them with a knife. He puts them on the canvas with a knife. So we're gonna go ahead and decrease the size of this. So this is now my knife, all right? And here we go, here we go. Shit, I have to take the paintbrush and not the smudge tool. Here we go, all right? And this is how he goes with the knife and he starts doing all sorts of little things, little peaks. And little things and just we're just gonna let these mountains go over to this side okay and here we're just gonna go down a little bit and then whoop back up and then oh, there's a little flat ridge oh and then it goes right straight down and then it goes oh, but way back up and then oh my god look at those things in there there's a lot of crap happening in here all right so now we're just gonna fill in a little bit rip clouds I don't know why I put the clouds with that angle. I really don't know, but uh, well, don't judge. All right. I'm going to take the smudge tool again, and you see it's kind of rough, right? So we're gonna unrough it. And you see here, some I have not been perfect. You see, there's like light areas in here. This works in our favor exactly because I also want the light to come from the right, or maybe who cares? So let's start smudging. Fix this a little bit. Already, it gives the, it gives it like different different layers of, of mountain, which I love. And this 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 technique of making mountains is so much fun. I cannot tell you. All I'm using is the paintbrush and the smudge tool, people. All right, this is really easy, really really easy. All right, so moving right along, let's start putting. I don't know. I'm going to do some snowy mountains today. All right. A beautiful cold winter day so we're gonna take we're gonna go you know to the white colors we're gonna stay at the bluish colors because we are going to want two shades of blue let's go ahead and take this one for the dark side I'm gonna have the light coming in from the right so we're gonna take the brush and we're gonna take now the peaks and all the sides on the left basically I have to imagine now where these mountains peak and shit so I'm going to go ahead and do this a few moments later. As you can see, it's uh, very, you know, very rough. But of course, we're not going to leave it like this. We are going to continue now with the smudge tool. 
So allow me to zoom in into my mountains a little bit and watch the magic happen. All right, there's gonna, as you can see, there's, there's things gonna be happening in here and it's gonna bring these mountains alive. Really, 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 we can do this, absolutely. You see, you start putting in these little things and oh, it looks so awesome. It just looks so awesome. So I'm gonna continue doing this in the shadowy part and we're just gonna bring that down, bring that down, bring that down. Well, it's a little problem problematic over here. Bring that down, smooth it out like butter. Mm, butter. Ooh, you see those black spots that I left inside of the snowy areas? You know, they, they have their purpose. I always love to leave a little crack between the shadowy areas. The shadowy areas and the non-shadowy areas of the snow. As you can see, again, the black spots just help create this illusion of, of, of somethingness. Here we have another shadowy side, which is going to overlap the other side like this. Simply because I decided to spontaneously. So people, after some time, here we go. This is it. This is this is the mountain range that we have here now that I have created. So I'm going to try and establish some type of ground. Mm -hmm. I'm going to remove a little bit of the uh, blackness uh, and just add a new blue color, a little bit blue color here. I'm, I'm just going to do it. OK, I'm just going to fast forward and I'll talk to you in a second. How about some trees? All right, for this, I'm going to take this brush, all right? And I'm just gonna do an example. I'm just gonna take a dark green color and poof, nope, and the brush and now poof, all right? So as we can see, this happens, this happens. It's just like basically a brush stroke or, or a brush splatter, if you will. And if I do twice, it's a bit more, you know, defined click 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 I click three times so what I love about this program is uh, I go ahead and add a value of spacing to up to 75 and now this happens okay I, I press I press and hold the mouse and I can do this but I'm gonna delete all of these and we are going to take this one really small and we're gonna do really distant far away trees Okay, and this again may take a while, so I may just stop talking and show you the result. So, after some time, people, I have added some trees with different shades of green. Obviously, for the darker greens, for the trees that are in the side of the shadow side of the mountains. Obviously, as you can see, I'm still adding some. These are my forests full of little creatures and lots of happy little trees with billion friends each. No tree left behind. So now the question is, we should add a few different things like bushes and, and, and things and, and little things that, you know, you know, these lines could be something like waves or something. And what are we going to do with this extra snow? So I have had an idea. Instead of doing uh, uh, reflections the hard way, I thought about cheating. And I'm going to do right here. I'm going to duplicate this layer. All right. I'm going to go to layer. I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to say flip vertically. I'm going to decrease the opacity and I'm going to check 
the move tool and I'm going to move the image down and as you can see a perfect thing happens and now I have to define where I want my water to be which is going to be somewhere there perfectly once it is upside down I go to the layer option go to transform and I say transparency not transform add alpha channel and now I take the eraser boop, and I can actually delete everything I don't need this is going how I'm going to leave it but obviously this is like a perfect reflection so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the brush tool we're gonna take any brush that is horizontal and what I want to do now is this really cool effect by holding uh, I'm gonna click here okay I'm gonna click this image right here boop okay so that is the last point where I clicked and now I uh, press on my keyboard left alt and left shift and you see this line up here okay so now if I go click it'll do a perfect straight line with that option okay I'm gonna delete this really quick and now I'm gonna take the smudge tool and we're gonna do exactly the same we're gonna do left alt left shift and we're just gonna go down okay create a straight line and as you can see we have just created boop, we have just created something that resembles a reflection well not a reflection but a brush stroke exactly downward and for those of you who know Bob Ross he does his reflections exactly this way okay I'm gonna click here left alt left shift go oop, shit. Right, let's do that again left alt left shift and this line appears and then I can go down with the mouse and click I'm gonna do it once on each pass see just downward strokes distorting the below image a lot Oof. Distorting the below image to the point that we actually need it okay so Bob Ross does this one time he goes you know he goes straight down on the reflection and then he goes perfectly horizontal which we're gonna do with the same method we're doing right now as well all right but we're gonna twist we're gonna spin the brush to 90 degrees and we're gonna put it upright and now we're gonna do it again from click from here and just take a poof and we're gonna do the same thing from here I'm gonna just go ahead and poof and there you go instant reflections and you know what I think I'm gonna leave it like that I think that is a perfect reflection absolutely stunning it's a bit cheating okay this is a bit unorthodox if you ask me but hey this is how we progress all right so now we have shamelessly cheated our way through that reflection but hey there it is so here we go I have added a little bit of green layers you know just a little bitty bit and I actually am going to continue because I'm not quite happy with the amount of fillage I still have to go I just changed the brush as well so it doesn't look all the same and I'm just adding dark areas okay these are just dark areas dark areas this is you no know, kind of like kind of like so this is the area where the snow meets the grass we're gonna leave some dark patches around we're gonna leave stuff open and we're gonna keep filling out until I am happy with the amount of grass and there we have it people I've added uh, well like you know like a shore and I've added a few extra layers of green you know to give it an illusion of stuff okay 
I'm going to take one of these splooshes. You know, it looks like a sploosh. I don't know if you call it that. It's like a spot. I don't know. If you check it out, you see it's like a sponge. If it's like if you take a sponge and, and do stuff. Well, here we have a awesome option that I discovered yesterday. Dynamics off. And if you go here and it says dynamics random. Well, check this out. Now, every time I move, every every time I move the, the mouse, it's going to do this. Which means it's going to do, you know, look at that. Look at that random pattern of goodness. Okay, so if we condense this down to a small brush, we can go ahead and do all sorts of mischief. We're going to go right into the nooks and crannies in here. Make this brush tiny. And you see that? Okay, but I'm going to take another. I'm going to take another. Let's take a yellowy golden color. Something like this. Something that defines kind of like you know brushes and, and and bushes 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 and stuff you see and there with just simple strokes of the mouse and if if i keep on in the same area it goes a lot lighter and just just, just like stuff happens like this is what bob ross always says you know kind of it, 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 it you make it come to life it's it's weird describing it but if you do this one time, you'll see what I mean. If you do this, you'll see your world, you know, come alive, literally, quite literally. Quite literally. You see all kinds of things, and we can just pop them in there. Something over there, maybe. Quite too big. No. All sorts of things happening. There's a little bush. There's another little bush. Just letting in a little bit of light. Doing things like this. And oops, that was wrong. Well, it's not wrong because there it is. And there's in the distance. All right. And uh, maybe there. A little bit. Just a tiny bit. What else can we do up here? Okay, so now we're going to take a darker color. I'm just going to paint right over it or you know paint and click a few times on it to give it like a definition maybe i don't know how you want to call it like shadows shadow area i don't even know how to do it but i just know that there's stuff to be done you have to give it highlights and you also give it dark areas which is what i'm doing and we can also you know just blend in a little bit of this into the scenery because it'll just give it a nice effect of, 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 of grassy effect I think you know kind of strange looks cool gives it a bit of texture and especially these dark violet areas that I have not filled with anything I want to fill them up with stuff fill them up with shrubs and bushes and little plants and, and all sorts of little tiny rocks and all sorts of critters and ant colonies and stuff little little thingies and little creepy crawlers and all sorts of creatures living in the trees and living under the soil and on the soil and on the grass and you know all very zen you know we just keep filling it in keep filling it in and again i don't really know what i'm doing i don't have any clue if these are the colors that i should be taking and I don't really care. I'm quite happy with what I'm creating so far. I have to admit the reflection has been a little bit of a cheat. But I, you know what, it has been the best reflection I've ever done. And it was the easiest reflection I've ever done. So why if it's there, why if it's easy and you can do it, why do it complicated? All right. So just filling out a few areas. Very delicious very satisfying yeah just fill it in fill it in duke, duke, duke. all sorts of things happening as good old bob ross would say there and maybe there lives a little tree i just loves how he talks and look at it it kind of looks like a i don't know i don't know untouched by humans which is really awesome 
So how about we just ruin my picture now, okay? So let's do what he always does. He just, you know, pops in a huge, big-ass tree. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a dark brownish color. Maybe the one I have right now. And I'm going to disable the dynamic option. All right. Now, how am I going to do this? Let me think. I'm going to, you know, he always says, be brave. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid to be brave. So I'm going to try and do a trunk. All right, so that's a huge ass tree. So let's make it stand on something. Let's make it stand on some land, a little tiny island perhaps. And maybe in your world, there lives a little island. So, you wonderful people, I think this is it for me. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm not happy with a few things, okay? It's very smushy, it's very blurry, a few things, it's, you know. It's not the way I am really happy, but the, 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 the idea is here, the proof of concept, all right? <laughs> it is possible to do Bob Ross paintings with GIMP. This is what I wanted to show you people, and this is what I have done with this video. And I am done. I think I am done. We could just sign it right now. It's kind of clunky. But hey, this is how you can do this. And I hope this was helpful to you people. And you know, if, I don't know, we can do some more paintings. I kind of like it. It's kind of fun. And maybe in the future I'll do some more. And with that said, people, thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you like the video. And leave a comment if you have something to say. And with these words, people, I say thank you again, and until next time, until next time.